How can we use CVP analysis in order to calculate target income, both before and after taxes? First, we need to understand what target income is. Managers often want to make a specific profit, either because they are required to do so by their shareholders or to meet goals set by the company. CVP analysis allows managers to determine what they have to sell in order to earn a target amount of income, either before tax income or after tax income also called net income. Although the break-even point is important for management to understand, managers do not want to end up at the break-even point because that means that their operating income is zero. Let's start by analyzing how to calculate the sales volume necessary to earn a before-tax target income, also known as income before income taxes or operating income. Actually, we can use the exact same formulas that we use to calculate the break-even point in both units and sales revenue. The only difference is that we will now determine either the number of units or the sales revenue necessary to earn a specific amount of income before income taxes. We'll start with the income statement approach. We'll use David Inc., a company which manufactures XD2. The company has the following information available for the month of November. The selling price per unit is $1,100. We then have all the following per unit variable costs. Direct materials of $400, direct labor of $200, sales commission of $30, and administrative expenses of $100. The total variable cost per unit is therefore equal to $730. Next are listed the monthly fixed costs as follows. Manufacturing overhead of $86,000, sales costs of $21,500, and administrative costs of $322,500. Total monthly fixed costs are $430,000. How many units does a company have to sell in order to earn a target before tax income of $120,000? We know the formula to calculate operating income is sales price per unit multiplied by Q minus variable cost per unit multiplied by Q minus total fixed costs equals operating income, with Q equal to the number of units sold. We can use the exact same formula, simply replacing the operating income with target operating income. To do that for David Inc., we're going to replace the target operating income with $120,000. The formula is therefore as follows. Sales price per unit multiplied by Q minus variable cost per unit multiplied by Q minus total fixed costs is equal to $120,000. Let's now use the information for David Inc. in the formula and solve for Q. David's sales price per unit is $1,100, their variable cost per unit $730, and their total fixed costs is $430,000. We're going to use this in our formula. 1,100Q minus 730Q minus $430,000 is equal to $120,000. Let's solve the equation. Let's start by adding $430,000 to both sides of the equation, which will result in 1,100Q minus 730Q minus $430,000 plus $430,000 is equal to $120,000 plus $430,000. When we simplify, we see that 1,100Q minus 730Q is equal to $550,000. 1,100Q minus 730Q is equal to 370Q, so 370Q is equal to $550,000. We can now solve for Q by dividing both sides by $370. So 370Q divided by $370 equals $550,000 divided by $370. Q is equal to $550,000 divided by $370. Q quantity is equal to 1,486.486 units. But we know that a company cannot produce 0.486 units. So therefore, we have to round up to the next whole unit. This company would have to produce 1,487 units to earn a target before tax income of $120,000. Why don't we round down to 1,186 units? That's because the company would end up with an operating income below the target they want, so we always round up 
to the next whole unit. So the formula we would use to calculate a target before tax operating income is sales price per unit multiplied by Q minus variable cost per unit multiplied by Q minus total fixed cost is equal to the target operating income. Let's move on to the first shortcut method, unit contribution margin approach. This also will calculate the number of units required in order to meet the target income before taxes. The formula for this approach is as follows. Q, meaning quantity of units, is equal to total fixed costs plus the target operating income, all divided by the contribution margin per unit. Using David Inc. again, we first have to calculate the contribution margin per unit, which is the sales price per unit minus the total variable cost per unit. Therefore, 1,100 minus 730 is equal to 370. That is the unit contribution margin. Remember that the total fixed costs are $430,000. We can now place that in our shortcut formula. Q is equal to total fixed costs plus target operating income all divided by the contribution margin per unit. Q equals total fixed costs of $430,000 plus the target operating income of $120,000 all divided by $370, the unit contribution margin. Q is equal to 1,486.486 units. Rounded, Q is equal to 1,487 units. This is the same answer we calculated under the income statement approach, which makes sense because both of these methods calculate the number of units required to meet a target income before taxes. So the formula we use to calculate the number of units required to reach a before tax operating income is Q equal to total fixed costs plus the target operating income all divided by the contribution margin per unit. Let's move on to the last shortcut method, contribution margin ratio approach. Remember that the first two methods, both the income statement approach and the unit contribution margin approach, calculate the number of units necessary to reach a target before tax income. However, businesses which have multiple products can't use either of these methods. Instead, multi-product companies calculate the sales revenue required to obtain a target income before taxes because this eliminates the problem of how many units each product needs to produce in order to obtain the target income. The formula for this approach is as follows. Total sales revenue is equal to total fixed costs plus target operating income, all divided by the contribution margin ratio. In this case, notice that the denominator is the contribution margin ratio. Remember that we can calculate the contribution margin ratio using either per unit information or total information. We have the per unit information available, so we're going to use that to calculate the contribution margin ratio. The contribution margin ratio is equal to the contribution margin per unit divided by the per unit selling price multiplied by 100%. We know that the contribution margin per unit is equal to 1,100 minus 730, which is equal to $370. We can now calculate the contribution margin ratio. $370 divided by $1,100 multiplied by 100% is equal to 33.6364%. We're going to round that to a contribution margin ratio of 34%. Note that we could have also rounded to two decimal places, in which case we would use 33.64. But for simplicity's sake, we're simply going to use 34%. We can now apply that to our formula. Total sales revenue is equal to total fixed costs plus target operating income divided by the contribution margin ratio. Total sales revenue is equal to $430,000 plus $120,000 all divided by 34%. Total sales revenue is equal to $1,617,647. This is the total sales revenue the company would have to earn in order to obtain a target operating income before taxes of $120,000. We have now calculated the units and sales revenue needed to obtain a target operating income before taxes. We can see that the formulas used to break even are identical to the formulas used to earn a target operating income before taxes. The only change we made is we replaced operating income of zero 
when calculating the break-even point with a target operating income of $120,000. But how do we calculate the units and sales revenue required to earn a target operating income after taxes? Actually, we will use almost the exact same formulas. We're just going to tweak it a little bit. Let's first remind ourselves how income after taxes, also called net income, is calculated. We'll use the information from David Inc. to demonstrate the calculation of income after taxes, or net income. Here we have David Inc.'s income statement down to the operating income line. Remember that operating income is income before income taxes. We can see that David Inc. has sales revenue of $2,200,000 and cost of goods sold of $1,286,000. This would earn the company a gross profit, which is calculated as sales revenue minus cost of goods sold, of $914,000. David then recorded operating expenses of sales commission, $60,000, administrative expenses, $200,000, sales costs, $21,500 and administrative costs of $322,500. That resulted in total operating expenses of $604,000. Gross profit of $914,000 less total operating expenses of $604,000 results in an operating income of $310,000. Now, assume that David has a tax rate of 25%. To calculate the income tax expense, we multiply operating income by the tax rate. $310,000 multiplied by 25% is equal to an income tax expense of $77,500. Therefore, net income, also known as operating income after taxes, is $232,500. Perfect. We now know how net income is calculated. Say we have decided to use a mathematical formula to calculate the number of units required to earn $232,500 of after-tax income. Can we simply update the formula and replace target operating income with target net income? And the answer is a hard no. Why not? Because the left side of the formula is before taxes, and we've added an after-tax net income on the right side of the formula, this simply will not work. In order to make the formula work, we either have to recalculate the left side to be after taxes, or recalculate the right side to be before taxes. Since the left side has a larger formula, we're going to do the easiest thing and recalculate the right side to a before tax operating income number. Let's do it. David Inc. would like to earn a target net income, also called income after taxes, of $232,500. The company has a 25% tax rate. Calculate the income before income taxes, also called operating income. We know that net income is equal to operating income minus the income tax expense. We know that income tax expense is equal to the tax rate multiplied by the operating income. So we can substitute this into our formula. Net income is equal to operating income minus the tax rate times operating income. We know that operating income is one times operating income. So now we have the formula. Net income is equal to one times operating income minus the tax rate multiplied by operating income. We can simplify this formula to net income is equal to one minus the tax rate multiplied by operating income. Let's now solve for operating income. To do that, we have to divide both sides by one minus the tax rate. So net income divided by one minus the tax rate is equal to one minus the tax rate multiplied by operating income all divided by one minus the tax rate. We can simplify this into net income divided by one minus the tax rate is equal to operating income, which is of course income before taxes. Let's flip it around. Operating income is equal to net income divided by one minus the tax rate. This is what we need in our formula to calculate the number of units to earn a target income after taxes. However, does this formula actually work? Let's test it out. Operating income is equal to $232,500 divided by 1 minus 0.25, which is, of course, the tax rate. 
If we solve the equation, we get operating income is equal to $310,000, which is perfect since if we check back on the full income statement, we see that this matches the income before income taxes, the operating income that we need in our formulas. We now know how to convert net income, which is also income after taxes, into income before income taxes, which means we can use this in all of our formulas, starting with the formula to calculate the target income after taxes using the income statement approach. Our formula is now sales price per unit multiplied by Q minus variable cost per unit multiplied by Q minus total fixed costs is equal to target net income divided by one minus the tax rate. The target net income divided by one minus the tax rate is equal to the target operating income before income taxes, which means that our formula will work perfectly. We simply had to substitute our formula of net income divided by one minus the tax rate for the operating income in our original formula. Can we do this for the shortcut unit contribution margin approach? Absolutely. We have simply updated the formula as follows. Q is equal to total fixed costs plus target net income divided by one minus the tax rate, all divided by the contribution margin per unit. The formula of net income divided by one minus the tax rate will calculate the target operating income, which is what our original formula used. And we can do this for the last shortcut too, the contribution margin ratio approach to calculate the required sales revenue. We have again updated the formula to be as follows. Total sales revenue is equal to total fixed costs plus target net income divided by one minus the tax rate, all divided by the contribution margin ratio. Again, the formula of net income divided by one minus the tax rate will calculate the target operating income, which is what our original formula used. So regardless of whether we are using the formulas to calculate the target income before taxes, or we are using the formulas to calculate the target income after taxes, we have the necessary knowledge to determine the units and sales revenue required to meet the income targets set by management. Thanks so much for watching.